Hey everybody, this is Carl back again for another Christmas theme spoiler review and today I'll be covering pick up where I left off from the first film the Santa Claus now I'll be covering Santa, the Santa Claus 2 and then the third one the escape clause I'll we'll do two separate videos back to back uh, if you haven't already check out my previous video that I posted on my youtube channel youtube.com slash talking of Carl like and subscribe share this with your friends let me know what you guys think and yeah we'll hop right into it uh as I, as I mentioned in my review of the first Santa Claus film, I think Tim, Al Tim Allen is my, you know, growing up, he was my Santa Claus. Because it's just the way he, he embodies it. It's just still charming. Although, after the first film, there will be a kind of decline. Um, uh, this movie is directed by Michael Limbeck. And as I mentioned before, Tim Allen plays Scott Calvin, AKA Santa Claus. Then you got Elizabeth Mitchell as Principal Carol Newman. Newman. Uh, Wendy Crewson uh, reprises a role as Laura Miller, Judge Reinhold as Neil Miller, Leanna Mumi as Lucy Miller, the their uh, six-year-old daughter. Uh, we got David Krumholtz who plays Bernard again who in a previous review I made the mistake of mentioning oh like well Bernard won't be seen in the next couple of films I made a mistake you know because I haven't seen this in years uh, he doesn't show up in the third film he only shows up in the first two and I think he show, might show back up in that TV show didn't see it don't really care to see it because like I said you know, there's a significant de decline in quality uh, of narrative quality in the films. Um, you got Eric Lloyd reprising his role as Charlie. Uh, we got Spencer Breeslin as Curtis the Elf for the first time. And you might remember him, might be dating myself here, but if you ever seen Bruce Willis' Disney film The Kid, he is supposed to be like playing like the young kid version of Bruce Willis's character, which, by the way, I like to say I have that on the list for next. Yeah, next year's Father's Day is part of the review for that. So just a slight little like uh, treat for you guys for next uh, June's Father's Day reviews, because I haven't seen that movie in a hot minute and I remember enjoying it. Uh. Uh, we got Daniel Whitman as Abby the Elf. Then we got a whole slew of like, you know, you know, A list, you know, or old school actors. Uh, as like just kind of stand ins for holiday theme icons. We got Aisha Tyler as Mother Nature, Peter Boyle as Father Time, who was the boss of Scott Calvin's company in the first film. Don't know why they couldn't just find some other, you know, A-list old guy to be this role. Uh, uh, Jay Thomas as the Easter Bunny, Kevin Pollock as Cupid, Art LaFleur as Tooth Fairy, Michael Dorn, uh, you might remember him as, uh, from Next Generation, um, Klingon, uh, crap, Klingon, Worf, yeah, there you go, jeez, uh, like, uh, uh Art LaFleur as the two favorite, Molly Shannon as Tracy, I just want to bring up here, I'm more of a Star Wars guy, not much of a Star Trek guy, or what Star Trek I do know, I got from Next Generation, I grew up on Next Generation, that was, you know, as much Star Trek as I consume i couldn't get anything i mean i watched a little bit of original star trek you know here and there but after next generation i kind of fell off with star trek so i'm not much of a trekkie unfortunately uh but yeah next generation is actually like in my opinion peak star trek after that 
I mean, Voyager has some fans, but like, honestly, eh, it, it, it's been sporadic in terms of quality with Star Trek here and there. They try to, you know, you know, you got the first time I actually recognized Chris Pine in, in anything was him playing it as, uh, 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 a young Kirk in the rebooted franchise movie franchise of Star Trek, and that the first, well, the first one I definitely thought was you know pretty good, but since then it's like okay I can't get into any of this stuff, so I mean like, and, and yeah there's a few you know Star Trek movies here and there. Unlike most people, I actually dug the, uh, uh somewhat the movie where Kirk and Picard meet each other for the first time. And it was a huge deal because these are two of the best Starfleet captains, the most iconic ones. Uh, so even though it was terrible in a lot of people's eyes, I cherish it because it's the only one we actually got with these two get the meet. Uh, uh, but yeah, like, and then there's the Wrath of Khan, and then uh, uh, the one with Spock dies. Was that the same one? I don't know. Like I said, I'm not much of a Star Trek guy, but outside all those that I mentioned, everything else seems very lackluster in terms of Star Trek. I didn't want to turn into a whole Star Trek thing, but um, uh, I just I'll bring that up. Anyway, the movie. Uh, begins where it's like you know, it's eight years after the first movie Scott has been like you know you know hit the money on the head yeah that's a phrase but he was bang on the money being Santa Claus throughout this time and now we got Curtis and Bernard who is struggling to uh, bring up to Santa that you know there's something we need to tell you is a, there's a Mrs. Claus uh basically you gotta get married before uh uh Christmas Eve this year otherwise you'll regress back to your normal self and I'm thinking okay yet yeah, yeah it's very wonky with this clause thing where it's like okay you put on the suit now you're the big guy Okay, and then throughout this eight years, you didn't mention about anything like, oh, by the way, you probably should, you know, you know, uh, try to find a wife in this time because, you know, eight years down the line, there might be like a regression because, because there's always, and this whole point, I guess it's kind of like the whole uh, gimmick of this trilogy is that there's always some new contract clause that, you know, you know these settles like you know that spring up that become a major plot point plot point in these movies and i'm thinking like okay and no point you want to give him like you know after the christmas season is over you don't sit sit down one february afternoon is like hey you know while we got you here's a, a list of other clauses and you know and stipulations as part of being santa claus you gotta get married uh, yeah, don't you know? You can, of course, he knows about like you know, holding his magic snow glow and wishing that you don't uh be you won't be Santa anymore, then it can reverse everything, re reverse time, all this other stuff. Don't do this, don't do that, you know, these kind of things, so that way it won't be any kind of slip ups. Like here, he'll be got eight years to prepare to find a wife rather than having 28 days to find a woman fall in love and uh uh and marry so that way he can stay being santa claus because every santa needs to have a mrs claus and he explains this to uh uh the other holiday folk and this is something that's always been bugging me over the years and i get it you probably you know pick and choose the major roles for these holiday icons but it's like where's the spirit of halloween where's the 
you know, the spirit of St. Patrick's Day. You can find no Irish actor. There are so many major holidays. I ain't talking about like Arbor Day or anything like that. It's like you got like significant amount of major holidays that people like definitely like celebrate. Spirit of Fourth of July or something like that. That's like that that should be like a fun thing. It's not really, you know, uh no mascot for it other than maybe like somebody who looks like a like some kind of presidential figure or something. It, it, it's like, you know, what where, where like you, you didn't put too much thought into that because that could have been like a fun thing to do. You can have some kind of emo goth girl playing the spirit of Halloween. That would have been fun. Or maybe not a Jack Snow. Oh, Disney owns Nightmare Before Christmas, so you could easily make a Jack Skeleton type dude to play as the spirit of Halloween. Cause it's like, man, you missing quite a few people. It's like 12 months out of the year, you know, at least eight of them have holidays, you know, major holidays dedicated to them. Where's the spirit of Thanksgiving? There's no pilgrim with a pet turkey or something. Uh, that would have been fun. But you really kind of like, I don't know, I was kind of feel like, you know, lackluster. It was like this, these movies need to be fun. They're kids. They're just, you know, mostly for kids. And you got to have some fun with this. If you're going to bring in all these holidays, uh, I give credit to, well, I give some credit to, uh, what's that movie I reviewed last year? Uh, crap. Ironically, Chris Pine was in that one too. It was an animated film with a Russian Santa. Uh, uh, movie. Rise of the Guardians, that was it. Even that had like at least well I say at least slightly more. Like uh because it's pretty much the same one. You got Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, Jack Frost, two favor two fairy. Uh you know, no, that's pretty much similar, roughly similar amount. I was I was like, oh man, they got it slightly more here but no uh, sorry forgive me uh i thought like oh man rise of gardens probably had at least one more extra holiday attached to it but no they don't even have the spirit of halloween on their roster either it's like man what y'all doing you 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 got like so many major holidays I, I'm, I'm getting off on the tangent here but it kind of that probably stuck out to me ever since i was a kid like you got a lot more holidays than this and mother nature is mother nature and father time considered major holidays uh, they, and and two fairy two fairy isn't like a holiday you know those three are like everyday things two you know any, every day somebody's missing a tooth time you know is all around us 365 days of the year mother nature just is you know represents every season so they're like everyday entities so you can easily replace them and fill in legit holidays. Uh, you know, the ones like I mentioned, like the Thanksgiving, the ha Halloween, the St. Patrick's Day, Fourth of July. You know, even throwing just for fun throwing Arbor Day. You know, the spirit of Arbor Day, and just have everybody you know forget he's there because he's like a forgetful holiday it's like oh Arbor Day guy i forgot you was even here that would have been funny there's something that can even feed into comedic gold there anyway he's letting him you know uh, santa's letting him know about the desinification because he's slowly losing his belly fat and his beard is shrinking so uh now he's informing uh curtis and and Bernard and I like Curtis in here and he's pretty fun 
him his dynamic with Bernard is really uh, entertaining, borderline like a you know uh, uh, like a you know couples and like a borderline you know couple in like a little spat almost where it could get easily annoying, but definitely, uh, uh, but but the problem with Curtis comes into the third film, which I'll mention there but i'll bring it up here as well he gets very bernard ish by not in a good way by the third film where he is just kind of like a smart idiot and making faux pas as like you really should not be making honestly you should know that you could easily been if you want to play him, you gotta put in some effort, more effort than that. But I'll get to that soon. But he's, you know, more of like a stick in the mud uh, in that one. And it's like, man, you, you know, like you used to be fun, and it's like now I just don't want to hear you. At least half the time. But, um, I, I want to bring up about like the really quick about the set. Now, clearly they have like a bigger, bigger budget now, and most of the set is pretty cool. And they still, you know, get, you know, children involved to playing the elves and stuff like that. But, uh, I'll mention in the third film, but they don't look very happy to be there. Uh, the first two films, like, you know, they got supposed to be a little bit more whimsy and, you know, very childlike fun going around. Third film, you will not see that. It's almost, almost non-existent if you pay attention. Uh, anyway, so, uh, Bernard, I mean, Curtis comes up with an idea because since it's the busiest time of year, which I'm not sure why you just now telling him under the wire and at the very least telling him the beginning of the year so you can at least have like 11 months to find a wife. This is, you know, it's kind of, kind of weird. It's like, you know, weird Christmas rom-com level of weird where these two who barely know each other fall in love, you know, uh, by the time the holiday, you know, reaches Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, and it's like, you know, that is way too unchar uncharacteristically fast uh, of a uh, uh, of falling in love with another person. So he goes to uh, uh, Curtis brings up an idea like, okay, we'll send you through this essentially a cloning machine, I guess, to where, like, they make, that's how they duplicate, you know, certain toys. So that way, uh, this, you know, toy Santa, uh, can run things at the shop while, uh, Scott is back, uh, in Lakeview to, uh, find himself a wife and fix things with Charlie because now he's on the naughty list and honestly, you got you already got like a good major plot point, and I guess they need like a B plot, but it's kind of like a lame B plot in my opinion with Charlie, who because the wife gonna end up having the same issue in the third film, but Charlie, you know, is like you know, of course he's a teenager, but you could have gave him almost anything else to like lay him on a night list so that way you know Scott can do something or just cut it out entirely because he's but her because well you can say like but her but it's like in some to some people it might be like a legit concern that hey Charlie's feeling neglected because like he sees all these other kids with their dads and you know uh, praising their dads and having all this great time with them, but you know, Charlie rarely sees his dad because he's busy being Santa, and so he is just struggling with 
holding this big major secret and you just want to shout the rooftops and, and praise his dad but he can't because he gotta keep it a secret but it's like kid you do know what the serious nature is it's like to say your dad works for the government or something like that so nobody be asking any freaking questions and nobody's even asking questions but you're just like yeah you're a little self-conscious or something like that or the father will be like just like in the first film not very attentive of a father but that wouldn't explain what's going on 11 months out of the other year or at the very least 10 months out of the rest of the year where like dude you're not Santa Claus all the time sure at the very least you your busiest time should be starting by November 1st or at least halfway through October but through other months out of the year you can't stop by and hang out you know for like a month or something like that to spend time with your kid and see everybody you know what's going on blah 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 it does not make any sense it, and so there should be no reason why charlie can't spend time with his dad a couple of months you know a month or two out of the year so he doesn't feel like he's being neglected and so now it's like oh it's crunch time and now you're like worried about your son and, and everything like that like dude where were you for the rest of the thing it, that didn't make any sense and that's the fault on Cal, uh, scott but it's fault on charlie because like you're acting like a petulant kid sure you are a kid so of course it's tracks but it's like you understand the gravity of the situation so you're acting out just for the sake of just wanna you wanna lash out instead of like i don't know uh just being standoffish or something that would have been probably better this is best instead of just vandalism he just you know uh quiet to a lot of people except for you know maybe like his mom and neil it was like he just like shut himself off or something like that and like the only time he's a little bit more cheery is when his father rolls around that part would have been a better supply where it's like you know get charlie out of his shell or something like that. they haven't been open to other people sound close off because he's sad that his father is not uh you know home it's a kind of very greek story here it was like well it was like a, the persephone is trapped in you know the underworld with hades and that's why uh it's winter most of the you know time in the uh well, time of the year so she's sad but only time she's happy is when the other half of the year she spends in springtime and and spend time with the mother and stuff like that uh uh something like that it could be you know you can play to something akin to that whereas like you know charlie is only happy during the winter season the fall and winter season because it's when he can spend time with his dad and through the rest of the year when it's summer and spring he's a little reckless because he doesn't see it that all that often something akin to that that would make a better sense and a little bit of a you know matchup that that just makes a whole lot better sense like i'm trying to rewrite the film but i'm just in my mind it's just like okay you guys you know could have done something akin to that this is off the top of my freaking head and that's the worst part um but i guess it makes sense to them at that time so i'm just going to cut to the chase with the whole charlie situation of course you know and thanks to the little girl who you know let him know how important he is and great he really is if you look past yourself and blah 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 blah. you know i just want to skip that part because that part really is just like was so boring to me uh you know to a certain degree it's like it's understandable to a degree you can you know anchor your sense to it but it's still you know you know a boring slog so scott shows but shows up lets us know what's going on and now he has to go to the school along with neil and uh laura because Charlie's been uh, defacing public property on the school. And so now we meet the principal Newman, who is, I was like, 
come across as like this hard ass Professor Snake type of chick. And then she makes a complete heel turn, you know, partway through the film out of nowhere. It's so fast. And it's like, oh, now she's all warm and cuddly and understanding. And it's like, you know, I don't know. Like, why was she such like a no nonsense, like hard ass earlier? Is there's a transition period that we didn't get to see as to what made her soften a bit? She just softens out of nowhere, in my opinion. That's just, but you know, she is like you know a principal. She try to like you know, uh, 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 stay on course, make sure these kids are you know getting to class on time and not screwing around this and that in the third. And she, and she chastising Scott for like, oh, it's so nice for you to finally like, uh, you know, present yourself and they do this whole battle of wits thing. Like, uh, too bad I'm come already come armed. Shut up. Uh, it's like you know who you showing off to, and and like who talks like that to a parent. And like you know, you should be thrilled the fact that you got three different parents. Uh. A, a father, a stepfather, and a mother showing up all together to see what's going on with the child. And like you, she would be a whole lot more A, grateful, and B, a little bit more like, you know, polite. Uh, and um, so, uh, okay, Scott, you know, his, his thing, was, he's like, you know, because he looks at Charlie like, oh, this is my boy. This is my firstborn. Like, you know, he's always been such a good kid. And like, yeah, I know, acknowledge that what he did was like a wrong thing. So I'm going to give him like a chance to like, hey, you know, you're sorry. I want you to like, you know, acknowledge what you did was wrong. You know, it's like, would you do it again? And like, no, I promise I will not do it again. I was like, cool. I was like, this is done. You know, then they walk out and get McDonald's, which is obviously a clear product placement. But Clearly, that's not like a, a proper way of handling the situation. Obviously, you know, just like you know, you gotta probably. What what I like is when it's like, you know, he calls out the principal who just doing this whole lecture. And it's like, hey, okay, enough of the lecture. Can we get to the reason why? And of course, Charlie, being a teenager, doesn't want to express why he did it. We all know why he did it because he's lashing out because you know he's crying out for attention. Clearly, um, you don't need a, a therapist, Neil. To, <laughs> God, Neil. And it's like they really hammer it home with this, because no legit therapist. I I don't even imagine even back in the early two thousands, real therapists behave like Neil does, or he seems more like a yogi more so than an actual therapist. And it's like you know, you know, uh. Uh, let's breathe. Uh, let's line up our chakras and yeah, let's exfoliate. Let's exfoliate the situation. It's like you really want to make this you know character unlikable as much as possible. And it's like the only redeeming quality is actually is a good guy. He has his heart in the right place. It's the only redeeming quality. But it's just like you're. You're playing this guy as a, a complete joke just for Tim Allen to just constantly like throw jabs at him in a nice way, but throw jabs at him for like comedic effect. Uh, is the guy really is not taking anything you know, like can't take him seriously, and it's like I don't think he offered any legit, you know, therapeutic options uh that's like legit how to handle children in this nature because we all know you don't need to be a therapist to know he's clearly crying out for attention that's blatantly obvious um so yeah neil's pretty much useless as a you know offering any kind of expertise in any kind of situation he's just a joke he's even a bigger joke in the third uh film uh so now they're all trying to put in their info on how to help Scott, you know, find a, a wife by Christmas. And of course, he also got this uh, uh, watch, 
to monitor the amount of magic he uses, kind of like a, you know, a fuel gauge. And how much magic he's, you know, uh, needs to use because he needs to be able to get back to the North Pole when he's done. And meanwhile, the, the fake Santa is like studying the rule book and he's eventually taking things a whole lot, you know. Yeah, like I said, there's already like a B plot, and this whole Charlie thing is, you know, you don't really need it, honestly, in my opinion. Uh, so, like, you got like this toy Santa who's taking the rules way too seriously to the point where now he deems everybody, you know, naughty. So he's going to ultimately give everybody a call. And now, you know, Bernard and uh, Curtis got to figure out how to stop this, you know, evil Santa. Anyway. So now, like Charlie's busted again from defracing property once again, and now like legit, like you know, it's like I'm, I'm just, why is he surprised that his dad uh, is pissed at him? And it's like you know, he calls him out, like, "Yo, you made a promise you wouldn't do this again, and here you are doing it again," and of course. I'm glad like the father uh, stepped up when the principal was threatened to like, you know, suspend him. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't want to take him out of school. So how would we just do some community service? And then like, he shows up on like a, I think like a Saturday and he starts scrubbing like all the lockers and, you know, and all the other stuff that was defaced. And he, he's, you know, he complained. I was like, it's so hard to take this stuff down it's like uh and and of course the father pointed out and this is a legit scene of him being a legit parent where it's like yeah you know that's why tagging is bad because this stuff is not meant to call them off so that's why you, it's important where you put it hence why you're here they like, don't say hence dad shut up i'll knock you upside the head little boy you used to be so adorable as a kid. Now he's just like a bunch of little punk. I don't want to say he's a punk, but it's like, clearly he's going through something, obviously. But it's just like, you know, you could, you know, uh, I'm not a parent, but I'm saying like, you got some pretty good artistic skills. Maybe you can channel that into some art classes, you know, like, you know, some graffiti. Or you could be a legit good graffiti artist and channel that into uh, something positive. Cause you got some skill. I'm just saying, you know, pivot. Uh, but then, you know, some another sweet moment is a little girl walks up to him because children seems to like sense who, you know, like he's Santa and stuff like that, just like in the first film. Uh, and and she's like, I've been a very good girl this year, and like, and he just uses a bit of his magic to know who her uh, who her name is. And it's like, uh, like uh, and he's has a little tender moment, you know, with his girl. And that's when, like, you know, this is when the shift with this principle starts to happen, where it's like, oh, I guess he sees, like, he's been so sweet to this girl. But it's like, okay, it's, this is so fast when this relationship sparks. It's no in between, or, you know, uh, then one day when he, uh, uh shows up to uh uh shows at her house he offers to give her a ride to the faculty christmas party and he uses his magic to turn his minivan into a sleigh and then making it snow at least on the section there in to cover the the uh sleigh and they go on and she going on about her childhood experience and uh, like she got into a fight in school because kids told her there's no such thing as Santa, and then her parents sent there break the news to her. And that's why she got disillusioned. Not to do, not that too dissimilar to how Laura and Neil was in the first film and how they got disillusioned when they were kids, but it was more so because they didn't get a particular present they was looking for. Uh, so they go to this faculty Christmas party and like. Uh, these uh, other teachers are so bummed out for being there. It's like, God, y'all never been to like a shindig before? 
so he, he, Scott uses magic again you know by this point he should be dead out of magic uh, and starts pulling out a magic sack full of all these old school toys that they all had, you know play with when they was children and so it's kind of liven things up then Scott and Newman start sharing a, a kiss together underneath a mistletoe that appeared out of nowhere it's like you're already gonna get your kiss dude why you have to waste more magic uh, than you probably have right now on like a funky little mistletoe and I'm pretty sure there's other spots that have mistletoe, mistletoe there already but then once he takes her home he finally admits to her that he's uh santa claus of course she doesn't believe him thinking he's mocking her uh over the story that uh, he told uh, she told him and it's like man you could you know, instead of wasting that little bit of magic on that uh uh mistletoe you could have like changed that sleigh back and show her show her you chasing that sleigh back into a minivan and boom you're believed you know uh and instead of again this kind of faux argument and breakup moment but then Curtis shows up and warns uh, Scott about the whole ordeal with the dictator Santa so now he's out of magic so uh, so he can't like magically appear in the North Pole so and Comet who been eating all of Lucy's candies like too big at this point to fly them back to the pole and curses uh jack pad he was using burn on re-entry so they decide to uh use a missing tooth from lucy to trick the well not trick but get the uh tooth fairy to show up so that way he can uh, get him to fly him to the north pole they do uh it's got Bernard Curtis and the elves stop the evil Santa and change him back into a toy. But then, uh, thanks to Charlie, after talking with Lucy, who, you know, those little typical kids in these kind of films that's like young, but they're, you know, old, old enough to know stuff and, you know, know what's going on around them and speak like, you know, wise words to certain like, shut up, you're sick, you're, you're eight, you don't know any freaking better. Stop acting like you're, you know more adult than you appear to be shut up uh but it was charlie who shows uh, uh principal newman the uh snow globe when he got as a kid the uh proof of magic and who his father really is thanks to the tooth fairy giving her right uh and uh to the north pole these two end up getting married because they, you know, fell for each other, which once again is pretty doggone fast and not, it's like, I don't know. I would say it's not realistic, but I'm saying like, it would have been more realistic if you get this set up much, at the very least, you know, sometime, you know, around Thanksgiving, giving a little bit more time spent with this teacher to where like, oh, legit foundation of feelings is set. This is too quick, way too quick. You didn't even have it. Like, I guess you can call the whole sleigh ride and time at the uh, faculty Christmas party as like a date, but that would have been qualified as a first date if anything else. You don't even know each other like that. There's no foundation built. It's very odd and doomed to fail, in my opinion. Real in realistic terms, that is doomed to fail. You don't know these people. You don't know each other, and like your first argument is going to be like a complete you know nonsense and she's gonna end up taking half of the uh, elf work for uh, elf workforce in the divorce i'm just saying realistic wise is very idiotic anyway i'm thinking too much on that they get married and you know the movie ends with him delivering presents as a fully formed santa again uh but it's not without his charming moments it still had a bit of charm to it uh at the time, I was super excited to see a sequel to the Santa Claus because as a kid, I really enjoyed the first Santa Claus film. And this still has some fun moments. But it's one of those things where it's like, man, you should have probably stopped that too. But we didn't know better. 
when the third one came around which speaking of i will be talking about in a few minutes my thoughts on the santa claus 3 the escape clause leave a comment below if you're watching this on youtube let me know what you guys think uh of uh the santa claus trilogy have you seen the mini series that they put on disney plus at all if you have let me know your take on it because i you know have zero interest in watching it i seen you know the trailer a while back well, at least because I think they own the second season. I seen the trailer for the first season last year, and I was not like, I was not hip to it at all. Uh, but anyway, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Take care.